right, guys. Welcome back to Exquisite Academy. And in today's video, we are going to look at functions of functions. We are still on differential calculus, though. So we are going to look at functions of functions. So functions of functions. Function of functions is actually still under your chain rule, which we did, but it's a little bit, a little bit more complex, but it's still under your chain rule. So before I start up, please do not forget to like and subscribe to our YouTube channel and leave your comments on the comment section. Thanks. Now let's say we have a function. Y equals to a setting function. Let's say it's a sine function. Now inside this function, we are not just having just your x, your x square, or we are having another function inside. Let's say the function is lin x. So we are basically having a setting, a setting function, this logarithmic function inside a trig function. It's possible that you have a trig function inside a logarithmic function. It's possible that you have a sign a trig function inside an exponential function. It is possible that you have a trig function inside an hyperbolic function. It's also possible that you have a logarithmic function inside an exponential function and everything inside a trig function. So, or you just have a normal linear equation or a parabola inside a logarithmic function and everything inside a sine function as many ways as possible so basically basically that's what we call functions or functions now how do we differentiate this it's still very much easy what we do we let our u equals to this function inside this place so our u is lin x and y becomes since we said our u is lin x our y becomes sine u so we have sine u so our du over dx becomes 1 over x and our dy over du becomes cos u. Now remember in chain rule, once we multiply these two together, our du will automatically cancel out. So we have dy over dx to be cos u all over x. Now, what is this u? We said our u is lin x, so our dy dx finally is cos lin x all over x. So, this is how you differentiate this. Now, what if this function of a function has power? Although there's a shortcut, instead of writing this, the easy way of doing that is when you have lin, whatever is inside our first function, the first function here is sine. Whatever is inside this function, you differentiate it, you have 1 over x. Then when you differentiate sine, you are supposed to have cos. Then you put it, you multiply this, your 1 over x, with cos of lin x. So let me give another example. Let's say you have sine y equals to exponential lin, no, sine x. And you are asked to differentiate this. So what becomes our u is sine x. So our u becomes sine x such that my y becomes exponential u. Then my du over dx automatically becomes cos x. And my dy over du becomes, when you differentiate exponential function, you are supposed to get exponential function back again. Now, when I multiply these two things together, I will have my dy over dx to be cos x times exponential u. But remember that our u is sine x, so I won't put exponential u. I will put exponential sine x. So I'm going to have cos x dot exponential sine x. So that will be our answer. If you want to save your time and you don't want to stress yourself, easy. The first function here is this exponential function. Now, whatever is inside, you differentiate it first, then you have cos. Now, if you differentiate the exponential function, you get exponential function, so you repeat the same thing. 
Let's do another example. Three. Let's say you have y equals to ln sine x and you are asked to differentiate. Now, what we said is that anytime you are differentiating the logarithmic function, it is differentiation of the function all over the function. Or you can as well say let u equals this and follow through the step. So when you differentiate this, you will obtain cos x. Then anytime you differentiate the logarithmic function, you always have 1 over that function. So you are going to have 1 over sin x. So you are left with cos x over sin x. Don't forget that your cos x over sin x is your cot x. So y prime becomes cot x. Alright, let's go deeper. Let's go deeper. All these are really basic. Let's go deeper. What if you have a function of this form? Let's say you have y equals to sine square ln x. How do you do that? Or let me change here to 5. Now, the first function is your sine. Let's follow through the shortcut. Or let's follow the shortcut first. Now, the first function is your sine. But don't forget that anytime you have a power, the power always comes down, then you subtract one from the power. So, if this one comes down from your first rule, that if you have ax to the power n, the n will come down. So, this 5 will come down first of all. So, you have 5 times, then subtract one from this power, you have this. 5 minus 4 is, 5 minus 1 is 4, then ln x. But that is not all. When you differentiate your sine function, you are supposed to have cos. When you differentiate your sine function, so you have cos, but what is inside this sine is your ln x. And don't also forget that this thing inside this function, you have to still differentiate it. Now, when you differentiate ln x, you obtain 1 over x. So your final answer becomes 5 sine 4 ln x, then cos ln x, all over x. Or let's follow through the long procedure. Now, what we are going to let to be u is not this ln x. This first function has a power. Although you can make this your u, but you still have to use chain rule. So let's say let u equals sine ln x. Now, what would be my du dx? Remember, we differentiated this before. That when you differentiate the sine function, you have cos. Then when you differentiate whatever is inside, you have 1 over x. So we have over x. We have gotten our du dx. Since we said u is sine ln x, our y becomes sine, becomes u raised to power 5. Our y becomes u raised to power 5, such that dy over du is 5 u raised to power 4. Now, when I multiply my dy du times du dx, I will have this times this. But remember that our u is sine ln x. So what I will have as my y prime is 5 sine ln x raised to power 4 times cos ln x all over x. So this becomes our final answer. So if you check, this corresponds to this. Let's do more examples. More examples. Let's say you have a function as complex as this and you are asked to differentiate. You are asked to differentiate this. Y equals exponential sine 5 ln x. Okay, now the first function here is this. Now remember, whenever you have a function, the first thing is to differentiate what is inside the function. But this function, this is what is inside the function, sign this. So I'm to differentiate this first. I'm to differentiate this. Now how do I differentiate this? I have to bring this power down. You know, we differentiated this here. Now if I'm differentiating sign, let me change it to 4 so it's not as if we repeated the same question. Let me change the function. So it is not as though we repeated the same question.
let me put it this way so the first thing is to differentiate this function here now in differentiating this function let's assume this is what we want to differentiate first like it's the original question since there's a power here the first thing is that the power must come down first and when the power comes down we have five then you subtract one from that power so you have ln sine x raised to power four we have gotten the first part now anytime you differentiate a logarithmic function you're supposed to have one over that function so you have times one over sine x don't forget that when you differentiate sine x you will get cos x so you have times cos x and lastly anytime you differentiate your exponential function you get your exponential function back so you have times exponential repeat everything again ln sine x raised to power 5 so this is your cos x all over your sine x is actually cot x so i can write this as y prime is 5 cot x then we have ln sine x raised to power 4 then dot your exponential function so this becomes your final answer when you differentiate that or if you want to follow through the long procedure now you make you everything here and differentiate this separately now in doing so you are still going to use another chain rule somewhere else again so we just went straight to the point let's do two more examples two more examples so you get more familiar with it let's say you have a function of this form y equals to tan exponential sine cos x let's say you have something like this now the first thing we said anytime you are differentiating something like this that there's a function is here we consider the first function the first function here is tan so we are differentiating what is inside the function tan and whatever is inside is exponential sine cos x this is not sine x times cos x this is sine cos x the cos x is inside the sine now how do we go about this if i want to differentiate this i will have to first of all differentiate this power first and in differentiating this power anytime i differentiate sine i will have cos so i have cos 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 x then dot if i differentiate cos x i will have minus sine x so i have minus sine x here now don't forget again that anytime you differentiate your exponential function you will eventually get your exponential function back so we'll repeat that and put our exponential function back and lastly when you differentiate your tan you are going to have sec square x so i'll have sec square brackets what is inside this is exponential sine cos x so this will be our answer or you can bring this minus sign out first. So we have minus sign x dot cos cos x. This cos x is inside this. Then dot we have exponential sign cos x. Then dot my sec square exponential sign cos x. So this becomes our final answer. If you want to follow through the long procedure. You make u equals to exponential sine cos x so that's basically all for this video please do not forget to like and subscribe to our youtube channel if you still have any issues with any question on functions or functions please state it in the comment section i will do more videos to expand on functions on functions so i would like to hear from you what do you think about this video is it okay do you like it or did you understand what i did if not please state it in the comment section i will do more videos for you so that you can understand functions of functions thanks for watching